Morning, everybody. It's the Drive to School podcast. Joining me today again is the director of Why for Life. It's Michelle Bauman. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so um, we uh, we started a series. Uh, we were just talking a, a little bit earlier and said, we're going to work our way through the Ten Commandments unless something comes up. And Best laid um, plans. Yeah, God thought that was funny. So <laughs> um, has there been anything um, related to life issues in the news? Yeah, yeah, I, I think. There might be a few things, but in particular, we've definitely got to talk about that Supreme Court leak yeah. and our response at, as Christians, right? So right. so what is it and, and what is it not, I guess, might also be a good thing to yeah. talk about because the internet is up in arms right now. Yeah, yeah, and it's going crazy, right? The, the people, are, people are seeing this leak and they're, they are jumping to conclusions or they want us maybe to believe things that aren't true. So, so... Basically, what the leak shows us is that um, Justice Alito, Justice Alito was chosen to write um, the brief on the majority vote, right? So this is this is um, the publication that will say this is why, and of course, other justices will be in, invited to write as well. Um, but Justice Alito's um, words are going to be those things that are published that tell us, hey, this is why we made the decision we did. So the majority vote is going to be won in favor of overturning Roe v. Wade, at least right now. Now, we also know from historical evidence that sometimes those things change. So they don't publish it until end of June um, or sometime in June. And so that gives what they'll do is they'll write these briefs and then they will send it around and make sure that everybody's okay with them. And then, then it'll be published, but you have some, some think times, some change your mind time, right? Kind of built in. Um, and so we have to have to assume that this leak um, was probably not leaked by the pro-life side <laughs> or by the majority side, right? It probably wasn't leaked by one of the justices that is voting to overturn Roe v. Wade because they would gain nothing from that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and probably wasn't leaked by a justice period. It was probably leaked by an aide or, or someone else. We just don't know, right? They're doing an investigation. So, um, so, so when this comes out then, of course, people are jumping on this and saying, uh, what this decision will do is it will return to the states the opportunity to decide whether or not abortion will be legal, abortion will be legal in their state. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't end abortion, although we as for life people might wish that it did. It doesn't end abortion. All it does is it returns it from the federal government to the state governments. And our representatives then at the state level get a chance to make laws. Um, and of course we vote those people in, right? So um, they get a chance then to say, okay, in our state, we don't want abortion or we do up till, up till birth or as California is thinking about even months after birth, right? Um, so, so unfortunately uh, there, there's a contingent that wants us to believe that in overturning Roe v. Wade, um, abortion will be illegal and women will be persecuted and um, maybe even, you know, caught doing illegal activities and imprisoned and all those sort of things. I mean, there's a lot of fear, mm -hmm. um, that fear mongering basically going on. So, yeah, it's it's unfortunate. Um, but and, and honestly, um, we know that's actually where it probably should be. Um, if you look at Justice Alito's comments, um, he says, you know, there's no guarantee of abortion in the Constitution. There is no right to an abortion in the Constitution. So we, as a Supreme Court, should have never made this decision. Now, he wasn't on the Supreme Court when they actually made the decision. But as an institution, they never should have guaranteed that right because they are bound to um, the 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 laws that 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 govern us right they're bound to the the constitution and they can only interpret laws based on the Const constitution and the constitution doesn't speak to abortion so um so again uh, he also points out that some states had decided 
not to have abortions. Some had decided to have abortion. And instead of the Supreme Court decision making um, all of these questions, settling all these questions, right, giving answers, what it did is it created this, this um, like chaos um, and, and even more division with that decision by taking that decision away from the states. So, yeah, very different from what I think much of social media wants us to believe. Right. On one hand, you sort of have uh, the, the it's the end of the world. Um, and this is sort of the, the beginning of um, disutopian uh, books and TV series on Hulu. Um, and, and on yes. the other hand, you have you have a contingency uh, among the pro-life movement to sort of say now the problem is solved. Um, and so one of the things then that that we sort of have done in our past is, well, for one, we've talked about um, talking about life issues under the gospel. And then we started to talk about life issues under the law. And it gives me sort of a, the recognition that like God outlawed murder and that didn't necessarily mm -hmm solve the problem. Um, and so God has given us 10 thou shalt nots, which we know are good. Yeah. We, they right. steer us. They have not necessarily enforced the behavior uh, because well, he's merciful. Our God doesn't simply start out saying, these are the lines. If you cross it, I'm going to send you to hell. And that's what I want. But rather, these are the things that destroy life. And I want to preserve life. And so much do I want this that I'll, I'll give my own just to save yours. Um, right. we recognize then that a law might be passed um, in, in some states to, to outlaw abortion. And if you live in a state um, where abortion then becomes outlawed, where do you, what, what, what becomes our voice as, as Christians, as, as those who, who are stand for life? How do we speak to our neighbors? How do we, how do we um, address a, a culture that, that is struggling with this? Yeah. So I think the first thing is to remember that this, the, the court system is not, is not God. Right? The court system is not our savior. Um, and whatever the courts decide, our work is still the same. Right? Our work is still to uphold the life of our neighbor uh, through our vocations. Um, sometimes that's our littlest neighbor, uh, the, the neighbor in, in the womb of a family member or a friend. And our work, no matter what the laws say, are to uphold that life. And by upholding that life, that very often means upholding the life of the mother. And so we continue to provide those, those um, items that a mother needs, right? Um, whether it's financial security or whether um, it, is, it includes um, some, some mental health um, components as well. We bring the mother to, to the church, right? And, and we welcome her in the church. Um, we welcome her and we say, this too um, can be forgiven. This too is something to rejoice about, right? This life, uh, no matter how that life was conceived, um, this, this is a gift from God, right? So, so our work doesn't really change. Um, we certainly are called um, by God uh, and through the fourth commandment, which we'll talk about next week, right? To honor the authorities, where we, where we can, where they don't contradict God. Um, but even when the authorities permit things that, that um, you know, and some states will permit abortion, things that God, that are not God pleasing, our work doesn't change, right? Um, Ephesians 4, 15, 4, 4, 15 talks about speaking the truth in love. Uh, 1 Peter 2, 1 Peter 3 um, in fact, the entire book of First Peter is all about um, about speaking that truth despite the persecution that you might that you might receive, not only from the government um, but from individuals, right? But to speak so that you can, and this is one of my favorite phrases, um, so that by doing good we put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. <laughs> That's, you know, and of course the world will always see Christ as as foolish. But we um, we get the opportunity to to embrace that foolishness, right? Uh, and and in the end, um, as people of life, it, it it well in the end, right? God's truth is going to be revealed, and and all foolishness, uh, so called foolishness, will be will be revealed as truth. But but even more, uh, we get to see those people in heaven, 
right? We get to those lives that, that were brought to faith, those lives that were affirmed and upheld so that they might live, we get to, we get to, to walk uh, the hallways of heaven with them. And that's, that's an incredible gift, right? In the end, it's not foolishness. In the end, you know, it, it's the, the, the faith is, is the elixir of life, the, the immortality, right? <laughs> so yeah, we don't repay evil for evil. We don't look to the government to be our savior. We continue to do the work, the work we've been called to do through our vocations. That's wonderful. Um, one of the things that I've, I've really just sort of wrestled with it as, as, uh, as I've been a pastor is that there's a big difference between helping and winning. Um, and that that's, I think, still true here, that we can look at this as, as a, a win for the pro-life side, but that just means that there are people who are losing and they're struggling yeah. and now they have less help. But if we're actually talking about helping, what we get to recognize is some of the laws might change, but the ways that we approach our neighbor don't. There still must be compassion. There must be service. It, it must not yep. simply be about who's on the right side and on the wrong side, but how can we inside of our vocations help our neighbor? Um, I, I love that you went to mental health care. I love that you went to, to financial aid and, and to a, a home within God's church where they can yep. receive the same mercy that we so desperately need. If this is just going to be about winning, I guess we can call it a day because our side won until it hasn't again because right. it was that changed and change again. I, I don't right. know that I'll call set in stone. Uh, but if it's about helping our neighbor, which is, I, I think, carved into two tablets, um, at least the second one, um, then I, I know that we can uh, always find something to do for our neighbor. Yeah, absolutely. And, and when you, when you do, you know, it's a great point, you know, winning, that's not what life is about, right? Winning creates two sides and you always have to have a loser. Um, but, but again, God, God brings in all people, unites them as one uh, in the faith and, and, um, and calls us then to act as one family, right? And families, families don't create sides. They're, that's not what they're designed for. Families are designed to uphold each other. They're designed to be there for each other and, and to uphold life. So, so yeah, and, and I think that's the perspective we need to have when we look out, um, you know, at the world. These are our brothers and sisters. Uh, whether they know it or not, these, they were created to be part of our family. Uh, so when we, when we interact with them, when we reach out to them, we reach out to them as brothers and sisters. Um, and, and hopefully bring them into the family if they're not already there. So yeah, absolutely. That's wonderful. Thanks so much. Uh, anything else that we need to know about this? Uh, I, I know right now there's only so much we can. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be changing, obviously. Um, you know, there's some rumor that the, that the announcement will be, you know, um, provided in May rather than June, but we'll just have to wait and see. And again, um, those pregnancy care centers, those um, our churches, our individuals who are out there supporting life and just in our own family of holding life and our family and friends. Um, we're doing the work that God has called us to do despite the government and its, and its whims or its changes or the voting population and what's, what's good now and what's not. Um, God's word never changes. It is always good. And, and we know that life um, is a blessing. Michelle Bauman is the director of Why for Life. I really encourage you to check them out. Uh, thank you so much for being with us on the Drive to School. Thanks for inviting me. Have a great day. You too.